my cloud there. We go. Okay, so you might have to just click saying accept. All right, so Claudia, you're in charge of uh, letting people in. Cool. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Today is Thursday, January 27th at 6.30 p.m. I'm sure everybody out there just got home from work or it's been a long day. You're probably hungry and uh, just want to relax. So I'm happy that you guys made it on tonight because it shows that you're very serious about your financial goals, about making money. And that's what we're here to do. So Claudia, if you could check the waiting room, please um, keep an eye out. Uh, so with that being said, you know, I just wanted to kind of like, why are we here, right? We're, we're here because uh, for the most part is you want to do better. You want to make money. You want to uh, better your future, your, 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 not even your future, your present your future. And, you know, I've been working on financial literacy for a very long time, you know, on my own and uh, for myself, you know, nobody else. And then over the last couple of years, we started noticing that a lot of our clients who bought with us or were trying to buy with us really needed uh, some help because I look at a lot of my clients' finances and I realized that they weren't making the smartest decisions with their money. So then I started pointing things out and little by little, it kind of started snowballing into uh, doing financial literacy workshops uh, for kids and then adults. And uh, so here we are. All right, so let me go ahead and start sharing my screen so we can start getting right into uh, the meat of things. By the way, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to type it into the chat uh, and, or if it's a long-winded question, uh, you can unmute yourself and then you could just uh, ask the question. So we're here to learn. We're here to grow. There's no dumb questions. And Joel says that he's still working, but he's there. Cool. And I know some of you guys are at work. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you guys. And uh, let's get right into it. Uh, by the way, our co-host, lovely Claudia Lomeli, she's helping out tonight. Thank you. All right. So. Everyone, Claudia, can you see this? Financial Literacy 101. All right, so real quick, just a, a quick intro so you know a little bit about my background. I've been real estate in 19 years. This is gonna be my 20th, years, uh, 20, 20th year in real estate. Right now I have about 30, well, I have 30 tenants paying me rent. And uh, yesterday I was with some buddies and someone asked me, hey Voltaire, how many tenants or how many doors do you have right now? And I hadn't seen them in a long time. And I just, you know, I was talking to a friend, somebody asked me that question from afar and I just turned around, I said 30. And then you should have seen his face was like, what? And then he turned to another friend and he's like, dude, what, what the hell? This fool just said 30. And, you know, I have a, a formula to get there, uh, by the way. And it feels really good when you have that many properties, just because uh, life's so much better, not having to worry about money. It just really is. It's just, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing, you know? Um, anyways, my first wholesale deal made $35,000 profit in 2005. So I invested in real estate uh, with flips and wholesaling and I'm a full-time real estate broker, commercial residential, and I'm a property manager. Um, and then we have about 20 people at the office. Might be less right now, 15 maybe. Um, and I've given over $100,000 to local charities. The biggest deal I've ever done is $11 million, an apartment complex, smallest deals, $50,000 piece of land. I've helped hundreds of families with their real estate needs. And at the age of 32, uh, shoot, that's six years ago, uh, that's when I became a millionaire. The other part of that is, you know, 32, I started at 18. That's 14 years. It took me 14 years to make my first million dollars, make and keep. Um, and the biggest reason was because I didn't really have mentorship to teach me how to really keep it. You know, I had mentorship on how to make money. I just couldn't figure out how to keep it. Um, and I have enough net worth and cash flow to retire, right? So 
you know, I do this because I like doing it. I like waking up and hope, hoping to change people's lives and help them, you know, finan uh, financially be in a better position. So that's who I am. That's my background. All right. So um, our reason is to help people understand the intricate concept of wealth. Um, right here at the top, you see here, uh, money without financial intelligence is money soon gone. So you, that's why a lot of people, they win the lottery and then they're broke. They win the lottery and then like a few years later, they go broke. They lose all their money because they don't know financial literacy or financial intelligence. Okay. So, all right. So real quick, you know, oops, how do I do this? Like, uh, like it or not wealth or lack of wealth will determine how enjoyable your life is so a lot of us you know we're uh not happy because at the root of it it all comes down to money right most divorces have to do because of money and you know most people aren't happy it, it, trust me when you, i've been both and i'm a lot happier with wealth than without wealth okay um so let me go ahead and sk skip ahead am i in the right all right here we go so the first thing we got to understand is money is a mindset, okay? That's the first thing we have to understand. So you have to know uh, the truth about money. So there's limiting beliefs about money. What are some of those, some of those limiting beliefs? Here they are. You know, uh, money is scarce. I am unworthy of money or you need money to make money. We all have heard that. Having money is selfish. And I felt like that for a while. I'm like, oh, I don't want too much money, <laughs> you know, because then uh, I'm, I'm selfish, right? And that's, uh, that's not accurate. More money, more problems. You know, Biggie Smalls, of course, you made that famous. I am not good with money. So a lot of us, you know, language is very important. And when you start saying things, speaking things, it becomes true. So if you're saying, I'm not good with money, then you're not good with money, right? Um, instead of, I'm improving my money intelligence, then you're just, okay, you're improving it, right? You're speaking it into existence. Money doesn't buy happiness. That's a big one. And it doesn't buy happiness, but trust me, it makes you happier. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. You have to work hard for money. I can either make money or follow my passion. It's either or, right? It's either or. You can't have both. I don't know where to start. I have no self-control. And then there's many more, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. So um, we have to know that these, that's, this, it, it, this is exactly what it is. It's a limiting belief. So we have to get away from that. <clears throat> now, I don't know if, if you guys uh, subscribe to my newsletter, or receive it or read it on a, on a monthly basis. I know um, a few of you guys reached out to me on this last one that I sent out in December. And it was called uh, Certificates of Proof. And it talks, <laughs> I started off with who's a better person, a poor person or a rich person. Right. And this whole thing about certificates of proof. And by the way, if you haven't received it or you don't receive this, shoot a DM to Claudia right now, and then we will set you up on this list. So we just need your email and your, your full name. Um, but anyways, a lot of people reached out to me about this article in particular, certificates of proof, because there's uh, a, you know, and I learned from all over the, the place, but, you know, I read this book, this author that, that, that wrote it. Uh, he is a, a rabbi, Jewish rabbi, um, Rabbi Lapin. And he wrote this book about money. I and hear you. You cannot hear me. Can you hear me, Claudia? No. You're good? You're good? No. Okay. No, no, yeah. All right. Thank you. So this guy wrote a book about money and he, he talked about the Jewish mindset, right? And why Jewish people have so much money and other people uh, don't, or they have a, a, a bigger piece than they should have. And it comes down with mindset since they're kids and 
Um, there's a nice story in there, which I'll share with you right now about certificates of proof. And there's only two ways to make money. One way to make money is you steal or you cheat or whatever, right? And that's not the way that we want to make money or that you should make money. The other way to make money is a legit way, right? You help other people get what they want. And then in return, you get money, right? So if you're a roofer and you do someone's roof, they're going to pay you money in exchange for that help, right? Um, if you work at a company, a nine to five, and you know they pay you $20 an hour to be there, well, guess what? You're helping them get to their, whatever it is, their goal, right? If you have a boss, you're helping your boss and your boss in return gives you dollars, right? So those dollars are certificates of proof that you did a good deed for somebody else. Got it? So if you're a roofer and someone, like in this example, um, someone calls you on a Saturday at 6 p.m. and says, hey, I need your help. It's raining. I have a leaky roof. Come over and fix my roof, right? Um, most people would say, 6 p.m. Saturday, dude, you should be home with your family and hanging out or whatever. But if you go out there and you help that person and exchange, they give you money, which is a certificate of proof. Well, that's just proof that you did something good for somebody else. So the people with the most amount of money, if you think about it, that means that they've helped the most amount of people, right? Those are all certificates of proof. So the owner of Microsoft, Bill Gates, he has almost, I don't know if he's still at the top, but he, you know, he has a lot of money. And guess what? I'm using Microsoft right now on my computer, right? Um, and a lot of you guys are too. Same thing with all these big tech companies or whatever. So they're helping people get what they want. And in return, they have money, aka certificates of proof. So I think that everyone in here you know, if you want to help society, if you want to help the world and you want to be a better person, you should help as many people get what they want, right? Whether it's through your business, your, your, your own business or by working and start accumulating these certificates of proof. And in the Jewish culture, they, the more money you have, the more gold you have in the eyes of God, the better you are as a human, um, and that's what I read in the book. And I thought it was genius because I'm like, man, I'm like, that, that, that makes all the sense in the world to me. So we have to change our, our mindset around money and know that and understand that money is good. Okay. It's not evil. It's not bad. Money is good. All right. So we have to start with mindset. That's number one. If you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat. Claudia will get to them. Okay. Now and later. So this is the next step. And I'm glad that some of you guys are writing these down because this is a workshop. You know, we need to um, write some of these things down. So the, the step after your mindset, and by the way, we're not going to cover mindset here. It's another workshop, but I highly recommend just um, getting your mindset right around money, reading books, listening to the podcast. Okay, so the next thing is, what are the two things that you don't like about or struggle the most with your current situation? So you have to know where you're at right now, okay? Where, where are you now with your current money situation? So this is something that I fill out twice a year. Uh, where are you now? And this is the seven boxes of life. You know, there's work, money, love, life, family, spirituality, friends, and self. All we're talking about in this workshop is money. Okay, so you would write two things that you're not happy with. And so, for example, one example is you can write down, I am $20,000 in debt. Okay, that's one struggle. And then the second struggle you can write in the second box is, I live paycheck to paycheck, right? So if you had this form, which again, I fill out twice a year, and we've I do workshops with realtors on this. 
you were right. Number one, I am twenty thousand dollars in debt. Number two, I live paycheck to paycheck, or whatever your current situation is. Okay, so this is the first two things I want you guys to write down, whether it's on your phone, preferably in a notepad, and then you have to rate your money one to ten. Ten is you're super happy with your money, and there's no improvement, which nobody should be a ten on here because I'm not even a ten, and uh, you wouldn't be on this call if you were a ten. And then number one is you're absolutely not happy with your money situation. So you rate yourself one to 10. Okay. Um, and then be honest with yourself, whatever that is. Now, that's how you set your first, you, you start working towards setting your first goal. You have to figure out where you're at. Okay. Number two, where do you want to be one year from now? So then you write down two goals of where you will be for each of those struggles this time next year. So you would address it. And then the, the form that I use twice a year is where will you be form? And I would go to money and I would say, okay, um, I would put the first thing that uh, uh, my goal is. And then the second goal, and then I would rate the importance, you know, compared to the rest of, you know, all these other boxes of life. So in this example, I wrote down, I would have paid $12,000 of debt down. So that's about $1,000 a month in this example. That's what I wrote. And then number two, I would have an additional $1,500 monthly from my side hustle or goals, right? Because number one addresses the issue of I'm $20,000 in debt. And then the second goal addresses the issue of I li I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I need more money. So then I, I wrote, I will have an additional $1,500 monthly from my side hustle. So at that point, you create a side hustle. So what is your, where are you right now? And where do you want to be later? Okay, so this is the, the point of this slide. Uh, and by the way, this works, right? When I started doing this, I would look, I would check in six months later to like, you know, write down some new goals or, you know, rate myself. And all of a sudden I'm like, huh, wow. All right. I've saved that much, you know, or I'm making that much. Wow. And, and I look at my old one and I'm looking now and I'm like, it's crazy how it works, right? I'm putting it into existence. Now I'm not going to go too into detail on this one, but <clears throat> goals, there's different ways to, to set goals for yourself. And, um, I use the SMART method of setting goals. SMART is an acronym for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-based goals, right? So one of my millionaire friends, he's worth about $5 million net worth. He gave you guys this uh, advice because he knows that I'm doing workshops and he's giving advice to people. And he said, set goals first, then set a game plan on how to achieve them. So how do you set a smart goal? It's got to be specific. Okay. So this is the example I gave. I want to work for Apple Inc. as a software engineer in Cupertino, California within one year after graduating from San Diego State. So this is a very specific goal. It names which company, which position, and the time period that you want to achieve it. So that's specific, measurable. I want to weigh 120 pounds by December 31st, 2021. So again, this goal, you can actually measure. It just doesn't say, I want to lose weight. You know, I want to lose weight isn't a goal, isn't a smart goal, which is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and has a time limit on there, okay? Um, if, if it has to be achievable. So if you say, hey, I want to be an astronaut by December 31st, that's not achievable if you're starting today because, you know, it could take like 10 years to become an astronaut with all the school and everything, you know, so it has to be achievable. Um, it has to be relevant. For example, uh, I wrote, I want a, I want a Ferrari, right? Well, this goal may not be relevant if you're not into cars or racing or whatever, you know, like me, I, I could care less about cars. So, you shouldn't write a goal that you're not, it's not for you. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't write a goal just to like, please your, your parents or your spouse or whatever. Like 
it has to be relevant to you because if it's not, most likely you're not going to achieve that goal. Cool. All right. So that's smart goal setting. And again, I'm not going to go too much into this, um, but we do have a, a, a different class for that. Um, okay. Any questions so far? Just to make sure that everyone's we're on the same page. I don't want to lose nobody. All right. So the next thing, all right, don't cry. Okay. Cause I, I know I've seen, <laughs> I've seen some of y'all faces before um, is tracking. Tracking is huge. You know, it goes back to the whole weight example. You know, if you don't know where you're at right now and where you want to be and every week you're on the scale, just tracking your weight progress, you're probably not going to get the results that you want. Okay. Same thing goes with money. Okay. We have to budget um, our money, which budget, I think, turned into an ugly word. Uh, I was talking to a friend who makes a lot of money, like a lot of money. And she doesn't have, she, she makes a lot of money, salary, but she spends it all. Right. And she, uh, when, when I first said, Hey, look, I can make you into a, uh, I, I could help you become a millionaire, not a problem, this and that. And she goes, she was excited. And I go, okay, cool. Let's, let's talk about a budget. She literally started crying. And I'm like, dude, are you okay? What's going on? Like, and because she understands that she spends too much money and she didn't want to face it. And, um, to this day, you know, she doesn't have a budget and, and you know, she, she never want to talk about it again. So, um, so let's talk about budget really quick. Um, it's actually pretty simple. This is my nephew's budget, his future budget, right? He's 10 years old right now. So this is, you know, him in the future. So he said, so the way you do a budget is pretty simple, right? It, it, it all starts with how much money do you make on a monthly basis, whatever your salary is or whatever your business produces, you start there. So if you make 10 grand, you would just use a one page budget. And by the way, this, this is a one page budget from Dave Ramsey. In case you guys don't know Dave Ramsey, he talks about, um, this is his book, by the way, you know, a lot of this stuff I get from different books that I've read over the years. So um, total money makeover. He's really good. I agree with most of his ideas. Um, some, uh, no, but most of them, yes. And this is a really good book in case, uh, you need some help there. You could start with Dave Ramsey's total money makeover. And this is his quick start budget. So if you make 10 grand, you put 10 grand. And then from there, the goal is to tell your money what to do. Always. You always want to tell your money what to do, because if you don't, money just finds its way somewhere else. So the first thing you want to tell your money to do is you want to, to, to pay yourself first. How do you pay yourself first? Right here under savings. So the first thing is you always want to save 20% of everything you make. If you save 20% of everything you make and invest it for the rest of your life, everybody in here would be, would, would be a millionaire easy. You guys would be financially wealthy and free. So what he did, Sonny, he put $22,000, which is 20% of the 10 grand into savings, right? So 500 into a house fund and 1500 into the SPY, the S&P 500, which historically over the last 50 years has appreciated 8% per year, okay? After you pay yourself first, then you pay everyone else your bills, right? So, you know, in this case, Sonny said, okay, I'm going to give the, you know, charity 5% of my money on a monthly basis. So 500 bucks. And then he allocated, you know, how much he's going to spend on groceries and restaurants on a monthly basis, 1500 bucks. And then he allocated 2000 for his house and uh, his insurance. So he's at 2020 and then utilities, $310 a month. 
he has no cable, as you can see. He's just running off the internet. Um, and then clothing, 150 bucks a month. That's what he allocated. He's not like a really stylish kid. And then transportation. You know, he has his car payment. He has his gas and oil. I guess he's doing like a, some type of electric car because $25 for uh, maintenance isn't enough. And then he has a uh, repairs and tire or uh, and tires. And then he has his auto insurance. So $625 for his auto. And then he has his health insurance and then he has entertainment Then he has educations and books. And guess what? Sonny has now $1,995 left over. So then he just said, okay, I'm going to put that extra savings into savings and the stock market, 1995. So personal, he has 2895. So each of these blocks, you know, charity 500, savings 2000, housing 2020, utilities 310. And so all this added up to 10,000 exactly. Okay. You add up all the categories. That's 10 grand a month. So at the end of the month, you shouldn't have any money left over. Does that make sense? Because you're telling your money what to do, all of it, what to do to the last penny. So um, you have to pay yourself first. And then for a lot of us, we have to get out of debt. So to get out of debt, let me share with you guys what you need to do to get out of debt. And this is, again, taken from the Total Money Makeover, Dave Ramsey. And let me show you guys here. I mean, okay, Claudia, can you see this? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so this is very simple. It's a two-page document. It's called the Debt Snowball. And all you have to do is list all your debts, okay? So if you have a credit card, number one, you put the, the name of the credit card and then the total payoff, how much you owe. So if you owe $416, you put it right here. And then you put the monthly minimum payment of $30. And then the next debt that you have, Capital One credit card, 1100 and the minimum monthly payment. So you list all your debts, okay? The next one is a Chase credit card, $2,372, $89 monthly payment. American Express, $15,000, $350 minimum monthly payment. And then your car note, $23,000 left to pay off, $409 a month. So the way that you get out of debt, the best way is using this debt snowball. And the way it works is you list smallest, to largest, and then you start focusing one at a time. So you focus on your smallest one first. Okay, I'm going to pay off this $416 one. Okay, so what you do is you pay this one off first, right? And then after it's paid off, you take the $30 minimum payment from it, then you add it to the next one. So the capital one, instead of paying one, uh, $77 a month, now you add $30 from the previous one that's gone, and then you, you add it to the minimum payment of the next one of $77. And now you're paying $107 a month until this one's paid off, your capital one. Once this one's paid off, then you add the 107 that you're paying for the first two cards. And then you add it to the next one, which is a Chase credit card, to the $89. Now you're paying $196 a month until you pay it off. And then you add 196 to the 350 of American Express minimum. And then you focus on that American Express until it's off. And then lastly, you have $546 that you used to pay on the other four. Then you add it to your car note and then you pay that down. Okay, $1,036 a month instead of $490 a month until you pay it off completely. Now, some of you guys may have less debt and some of you guys might fill up this entire page. But instead of being overwhelmed and you know, analysis by, by per, paralysis or paralysis by analysis, you want to just focus on the small one and then the next smallest one or bigger one and then the bigger one and then bigger one. And then that's how you pay off all your debt. Okay. It's called debt snowball. Again, we, we have a, an entire class on this, but this is kind of just like the fast version. Claudia, go ahead. And the other ones would be, you'll be paying minimum 
payments on those. Right. You pay minimum payments on all of them uh, that you're not focused on. Correct. Cool. All right. Um, doing the, the debt snowball still pay on your other cards minimum. Yes. Yeah, that was a thanks for answering that. You still pay the other ones. Correct. All right. So let's get back into this tracking. Okay. The other part of tracking is after you track. And by the way, what do you track? You track everything, guys. Um, I remember tracking. Uh, I used to have a, an app. This is like 10 years ago. And I used to track like 25 cents whenever I put them in those uh, in, uh, the, the machines for the, uh, the parking. I used to put like 25 cents and then track it. And then if I tipped the waiter a couple bucks, then I would track that too. I'm talking about like every single little thing that I spent money on, I tracked. And guess what? It sucks and it's boring and nobody likes doing it. And um, it's, it's almost like me when I go to the gym and my trainer says, oh, did you track your calories? Did you track your macros and all this? And I'm like, no, nah, I didn't. Why? I'm like, because I don't like doing it. It sucks, you know? Well, guess what? I'm not really serious about working out. I'm not serious about my body or else I would track my macros and everything that I put in my mouth. Same thing goes with your finances. If you're serious about it, trust me, you will, you will track it and you would do a monthly budget. But if you're not, then, you know, it's going to show definitely. All right. So the next thing is find a money mentor and study. Okay. So that's the next thing that we need to talk about. You got to fast track it. Don't reinvent the wheel. So a lot of times, this is what, what happened to me. Again, I told you guys, it took me 14 years to become a millionaire, it shouldn't take you that long. It shouldn't take me that long. So I went like this. I went like this, all this, you know, you see this little slide. If you find a money mentor, you could literally go like this. Like, cause they have a blueprint and you just copy what they do, right? And everyone should make it a point to find a handful of people that have money, and once a month, have lunch with them, reach out to them, have a conversation, and really, um, you're probably not going to find any secrets, right? It's, they do all the same boring stuff that every other millionaire does to become a boring, but at least it starts like to rub off on you. And then you start to, it's, it starts getting embedded in, in your, in who you are, right? Um, so fast track it. Don't reinvent the wheel. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. You know, it shouldn't take you 14 years like it took me, but maybe you do it in half the time, seven years, right? And you could do it, again, if you just follow somebody else. So you, you could either hire someone or make a new friend. Um, to learn... So make it a job. The next thing is make it a job uh, to learn about money, right? Because what I mean by that, um, start reading books. You know, um, there's always all these books about how to make money. You know, there's this one. There's the Automatic Home uh, Millionaire Homeowner, which is a great book. Make it a job. So uh, listen to podcasts. And the best way to do it is you do something like this, right? You just, you know, this is a, a snapshot of my calendar today. So you want to put everything on your calendar. So if you have your money goals and you, 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 you put time, uh, uh, you put a time slot in your calendar that you're going to read a book, or you put a time slot in your calendar that you go to lunch with a, a millionaire mentor, or you put a time slot to listen to a podcast for an hour. So you know, this is, I showed one of my friends, my calendar one time, and he was tripping out like, oh my God, man, you put everything in there. Like, you know, what time you, you go to lunch and your personal time and blah, blah, blah. And I go, yeah, man, I put everything in there because I don't want to miss anything. Right. So I highly encourage you guys to use a really good calendar, put your family time in there make sure you see your family members and uh, put your uh, studying time in there. That's what we're talking about right now. Studying time. Uh, that way you don't miss it. 
you know, or else it's never going to get done if you don't calendar it. That's the way I feel about things. If I don't calendar it, it's not going to get done. And then the last thing on here is bullet point is know that it will take time and years of dedication. So don't give up on yourself. If you're not a millionaire after six weeks or six months, you know, um, I I've had that feeling of giving up on myself, you know, years into real estate. When I first started real estate, I thought I was going to be a millionaire easy, facile by 25 easy. I was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's cake. And then 25 came and went and I'm like, shit, you know, and I'm like, okay, 27 and 27 came and went and I'm like, okay, 30 for sure. 30 came and went. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, damn, maybe I should do something else. <laughs> you know, I'm not a millionaire yet. Um, uh, so don't give up on yourself. It takes lots of time, lots of dedication. You just got to keep going. All right. So. I'm going to leave it at, at, at this because um, this is going to be the last slide and I'm not going to go into this one because this one's just a completely different, uh, well, it's a whole nother topic. It's going to take a long time. But when, when I say invest, a lot of people say, well, shoot, I don't make that much money. You know, how am I going to invest in this and that? Um, it doesn't take a lot of money to invest with compound interest, right? Um, the first thing I would recommend is everybody do a, a monthly budget within the monthly budget. You tell your money what to do. And like I mentioned, 20% is, is, is the rule of thumb. So 20%, every paycheck, a lot of us get paid every two weeks. You put that away into your savings or into an index fund like the SPY. That's the S&P 500. That's, a, that's basically you're betting on the U.S. economy, okay? So you do that every week after many years, you're going to start to see it compound into tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? Once you have that, and a lot of you guys have 401ks, and that's kind of what you're doing. And what I would recommend is that you maximize your 401k and you save a total between your 401k and your own money, uh, your bank account or whatever, if they don't allow you to put this much into it, do at least 20% of your income, every paycheck, and you start just stacking it, right? After you have enough, then you start investing into real estate. And you start off with your first home. This could be a condo. And then a condo turns into a townhome, townhome turns into a duplex, fourplex, and then a single family home. Okay. And in that order. Um, and at the end of the day, everyone on this call should easily be able to end up with five homes by the time you retire. Now, hold on a second. Let's see if I could pull up a, a quick, a quick slide here. Um, where am I? Okay. All right. So we have a workshop that's called uh, how to end up with, with five homes by the end, by the time you retire. And all it is, is uh, like I was talking to a friend yesterday, the same friend that I was talking my, earlier in the story uh, when somebody asked me how many units I have. And I was showing him about different loan policies, monetary policies that most people don't know, right? Most people don't know that you could actually buy a, a home every 12 months and get basically a first time buyer loan every 12 months. Most people don't know that. Um, so most people stay in their homes for too long, right? They stay in their homes for seven years, 10 years. Some people stay in there forever and just pay it off, which isn't the best money move if you're about making money. If you're about feeling safe and secure, uh, which a lot of us, again, that's, that's our money mindset since we're kids, right? Your money mindset as a kid is, oh, grow up, have a good job, buy a house, pay it off. That, that's fine, but that's not, you're not using the rules to your advantage. The rules are you can buy one every 12 months and the bank will loan you money if you have a good job and you know income, good credit and all that, of course. 
and you could easily um, end up with many homes. So I'm going to show you a quick example of uh, one of my buddies who's a plumber and who is retiring as he makes plumbing wages, by the way, he's not making like crazy amount of money. And he um, uh, has, he had four properties this year, we sold one of them. So he has three properties. Um, and he's in his early 40s. And he's projected to be a millionaire very, very soon in the next few years. And uh, let me see if I could find his uh, his story. Here we go. And by the way, he did this with, he started off with $7,800. That's how much money he had. Um, and now he, he turned $7,800 into $270. This is an old slide. Second property has $155. The next one, $205. And then this one, he probably has about $100. So if you add them all up, he has 475 plus 100, 575. Uh, he has over $700,000. And a quick projection, about 22 years from now, his, he's going to have about $3 million and he's going to be making $10,000 a month, $10,411 a month. All from taking it off from $7,800. That's what he started with. $7,800. That's it. $7,800. Uh, the only difference between him and everybody else is that he knows the rules that he could get a new home every 12 months. And he did it out of necessity because he kept having kids and then he just needed a bigger and bigger house. Right. He didn't know. He didn't, he didn't know what he was doing until I sat down with him. I kind of showed him what he's going to uh, have. And, and actually, um, he's going to have, he's probably going to be a millionaire within the next like two or three years, um, on this trajectory. And, uh, so at the end of the day, he's a plumber. And the reason why I bring him up all the time is because anybody could do it. You don't even be making a million dollars. You could do this making $50,000 a year, $75,000 a year, a hundred thousand a year. Obviously it helps, but it all comes down to that same thing. We talked about at the beginning. If you don't have financial intelligence, it doesn't matter. You know, you're going to lose um, your, your money. So last thing I'm going to end with is the advice I get from uh, my millionaire friends. So these are all my millionaire friends. This is the advice that they give. You know, I put their net worth next to each one. I think this, this guy has the most $225 million. When I talked to him over the phone, he had just the one word response to you know he said read that's his advice to you guys to become a millionaire read 225 million dollars um, but i highlighted today's class from this millionaire friend he's worth over five million dollars and he said uh set goals first then set a game plan on how to achieve them and that's what we're talking about tonight is your financial goals so any questions on tonight's uh, topic and our workshop, I try to make it as simple and straightforward as possible. There's again, there's no secrets. They're just reminders. Um, does anyone have any questions uh, before we wrap this up? Can you, <clears throat> I know a lot of people jumped on because we mentioned that we were going to touch the envelope system a little bit. Sure. Can you just do like a brief idea or tell yeah. them where they can look into that? I know I've used it for quite some time and it helped me when I was obviously just working out of cash or living out of cash, but it helped. So yeah. if you can touch that for a couple minutes. Cool. Let's do it. All right. So let me see if I have the, uh, the slide on the envelope. Um. Okay, let me touch on this real quick, because this is huge. I see this mistake all the time. Carrying debt. A lot of us have debt, and then, but you have $10,000 cash or $20,000 cash you know, for uh, an emergency. Again, that's a money mindset. We got to get rid of that. So it doesn't make any sense to have $10,000 cash for an emergency 
if you have $15,000 in debt or $10,000 in debt or $5,000 in debt, okay? So you should always have, if you have debt, you shouldn't have cash. You should use all your cash to pay down the debt. Why? Because most debt with credit card and balances and things like that, you're paying annually 16%. That's, that's on average, on the low end, actually, on your debt that you have. So if you have $10,000 of debt, um, you, you're, you're basically paying $1,600 um, a year just to have that $10,000 debt credit card. So if you have cash, pay, use your cash to pay off all the debt. You shouldn't have any cash, not even for emergency. You just use your credit card in an emergency. Um, so basically, you know, you're paying a lot of on a $15,000 credit card debt at 16%, you're paying $2,400 just to borrow your own money. Does that make sense? So uh, I think you guys should all get away from that. And to add on to that too, um, I mean, I was doing that and it was super scary when Volter told me like, just use the money you have to pay off the debt you have. I was like, this guy is tripping. Like, I need this. I want to feel comfortable, secure. I have kids. And that's probably the best thing that I did um, was pay off the debt and, yeah, have a, le a lot less money uh, for cash. But that just freed me from so much. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it is scary to be cashless. But, again, if you have debt, you don't need the you need the cash. All right. So let's go into the envelope system. And I think I found, I'm trying to find the, the same one that we used for our last class um, that we had for the kids. But basically it goes something like this. Okay. So there's something called the envelope system. And I'm using, you know, I just pulled it up on, M on Amazon so you guys could kind of get a visual. So if you guys, if it's easier for you guys to do a budget this way, then do it this way. So what you do is you get a bunch of envelopes, okay? And then you write on them, you know, um, whatever they're for. So for example, this envelope right here says groceries, right? So if you're going to spend $500 a month on groceries, what you do is you put $500 cash inside that envelope. All right. And then you use it for groceries on a monthly basis. So guess what? If it's the 23rd of the month and you're out of grocery money, that's it. You, you know, you don't, <laughs> hopefully you got some like extra food in the house or something, but the, the goal is not to go past that. Right. If you want to save up for a vacation and you say, Hey, I'm going to take a vacation in May. Um, it's going to cost me a thousand bucks then you start saving every month. You put money into that envelope. Sit into that envelope. Um, let's see what other categories we could find here. Um, if you have going out money, you just write going, going out money. And then if you allot yourself, you know, a thousand dollars a month for going out money, that's probably a lot. So let's do whatever, 300 bucks a month, right? So you put $300 a month for going out money. Then you put $300 cash. And guess what? If you're at the bar and you look in your envelope of $300 and it's empty, you just take your ass home, you know, unless your friend's going to pay for your, for your drinks or whatever, your food. But that's what an envelope system is. And that's really um, how you should use it. And guess what? It's scary for a lot of us, right? It's scary for us because we have the credit card and we just swipe unlimited. We don't have a budget. But if you use the envelope system and you use it with cash, right? So if you make five grand a month, you just cash out your entire check, except for the 20%. 20%, you leave it in there. That's a thousand bucks. So then you have $4,000 cash and then you put it in different envelopes. And then, okay, once for the rent, once for the utilities, once for the groceries, once for the gas, once for this. And then once you start doing that and you start you're seeing like real cash leave, you become more responsible. You know, you get in line and you do the right thing. And uh, of course, 
you know, the first few months you might mess up and you're like, shoot, I didn't have enough money or I spent overspent or whatever. But over time you start to do a lot better, better and better and better. Thanks for catching that, Vanessa. Is there anything else that we didn't cover? That's all I can think of. I'm not sure if anyone else was looking to get any other information or tips from Voltaire. Yeah. And, and by the way, so the newsletter, if you want to sign up for that, go ahead and, uh, DM Claudia, your, your name and email. And then if you want invitations to our next workshops with different topics, um, and like I mentioned, we have so many topics uh, that we do. We do two workshops a month. I think the next workshop we're going to be covering is, Vanessa, do you remember the next workshop we're covering? It's going to be how to get five homes. Oh, oh that, that is the next one. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I like that topic. So I'm going to show you guys how to end up with five homes by the time you retire. Um, within that workshop, I'm going to teach you how I made my first million um, using the same $50,000 over and over and over and over. Um, so I hope to see you then. If you have any questions, until then, feel free to reach out to us. You guys have our information. And again, when it comes to money and things like that, you guys could always reach out and ask any questions. Uh, thanks a lot. We wish you nothing but the best. And um, definitely write out those, at the beginning of the workshop, when we started, I said, write out two things you're not happy with and then the, what you're gonna do about them in the next 12 months and then review them every month. And, and trust me, it's gonna start changing like your, your, your money situation. So we'll see each other. Thanks a lot. Peace. All right.